Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Positive Living Center. We are based out of Oakhurst, California, and we're being presented to you this morning by Zoom, so we can have everyone from around the country, maybe around the globe, uh, join us this morning. It's all so good to see all of you again. Mm -hmm. And welcome anyone who's here for the first time or who has not been here for a while. Thank you for coming back to us. This is still the year of manifesting. And today is our healing circle service, which we do every third Sunday. I look forward to that as always. Our themes for the month, taking a spiritual inventory. What have I learned and my spiritual goals for 2022? Hmm. It's time for us to relax for a few minutes. Take this time together and go into a meditation. Take a deep breath with me. Let it all out. Let it all go. Let everything go. And take this time to be together and to enjoy the peace. Jim, if you're playing, you are muted. We can't hear you. Thank you. I sit out late on my back stairs, feel the breeze in the evening air. My thoughts wander to the mystery of the spirit world and the world I see. Thank you, Jim, for playing that music. It was beautiful. As we journey together, we simply look at where we have been in 2021 and look forward to our spiritual goals for 2022. Thank you, God, for being in our lives. And so it is. What a great way to start a day in service with all these fabulous souls. It's time for our spiritual thought. I want to welcome Reverend Missy Higginbotham to give us that spiritual thought. Good morning, Missy. Good morning, everybody. Christmas time. We're getting close. And I start thinking about the the gifting that we tend to give and the gift of presence. And I love the, the present and the presence and the, the play on words, the gift of presence. And so I wanted to talk about gifting and radiating the presence, uh, being present at the moment and invoking presence. Those are all 
thoughts that came to my mind when I was thinking about, you know, what am I going to share with you today? And so it's um, invoking presence. You know, we, we talk about invoking the presence. And a lot of times we think about in invocation that we're invoking something outside of ourselves. But we're not really, are we? We're invoking the presence within us, we're invoking the presence within all creation. You know, I am that I am, and I am this I am. And so when we do, do invoke, we're invoking God within everything and within everyone to awaken and rise. And at Christmas time, we're more, more focused, I think, and conscious about invoking the Christ consciousness within us and within and, and being aware and, and calling on uh, uh, the Christ consciousness within everybody to awaken and rise. We, it, isn't that why we say namaste? And uh, I, I, the divine in me, the Christ within me, uh, acknowledges the Christ and the divine in you. So we're, we're, we're calling on, on that divine within everybody to rise and awaken as we, our focus is on the birth of the Christ within us all. And, uh, and we're not calling upon God to come into a place because God is already there. God is, God is, God is, God is in the beginning. There was only God. And so how can we call God into a place when God is already there. What we can do is acknowledge and welcome so that we can enlarge and allow grace to step in and, and be more magnificent for us, with us, and as us. And uh, so it kind of reminds you of a song I used to sing a long time ago. I don't remember it all, but it, it was, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. And yes, it is, because we are all here. And the house is here and the, and the trees are here and the birds are here because creation is all there and it's all God. And, and therefore, when we take the Christ light with us and wherever we go, then is holy ground. Because you see, we can't be made holy because we already are because we carry the Christ with us, for us and as us. And, um, and so with that, we can be present for others. You know, I, I can remember years ago when... Uh, and I was in the military, and 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 when you're with uh, when you're a young uh, lieutenant, and you're there with colonels, right? And and there's and colonels want to be generals, and I can remember uh, talking with this general, and he was in front of me, and it was like I was the only one there for him. He was so present with me. I was so amazed. It was like there was nothing else in his view but me. And I thought, oh, my God. And it really brought to my attention how I needed to be for the people that worked for and with me, that I needed to be that present for others. And then there was this other colonel that was a general wannabe. And he he came up and greeted me. But his, his view was over my shoulder looking to see who there was that he should be impressing, right? And I thought, that's not who I want to be because he wasn't present for me. But, and so, you know, we learn from the good and the not so great people, how we want to be present for others in this world. And so let's, um, so when we're looking, looking someone in the eye and being present for them, and it's a way of blessing. It's a way of blessing, being present, being present for the moment. And we can carry this with us. And, and how do we do this? How do we, how are we present for others? And one of the ways is by blessing. And how do we do this? Well, it's a, it's a practice and it's being consistent, you know, and we can use what other modality that we need to do. But in doing this, we need to release our need to be angry, our need to be resentful, our need, the holding on of old pain, because that holding on of old pain and old hurts and old resentments only hurt us. And it's our choice. It's our choice to choose freedom. We can choose to focus on the presence within, the presence of the Christ flame within us, you know, uh, and we can, we can do that on a consistent basis. The Christ flame is here the divine flame, the creator flame, 
That's what animates us. And we can just imagine throwing all the old resentments, all the old anger, all the old pain into there and seeing it transmuted. And we can say, here, God, it's yours. Take it. It is done. It is done. It is done. And then we can choose a new way of living. And yeah, it's not easy. And that's why our practitioners are here to help you. They're here to journey with you, to help you along the way. Because transformation is messy. It's not easy. Change is never easy. But a new direction, new choices can be made. And that's the present that you can gift yourself with this season. You know, I'm a, whenever I think of, of the, the, the act or the art of spiritual presence, I, I think of Brother Lawrence, uh, uh, the practice of the presence of God. And I want to read you this. It's a little long, but, but I really like it because, you know, when we talk about, about getting up on that horse, you know, when you fall on the horse, you need to get back up. And, and, and Brother Lawrence um, was this... Um, Labra was his brother, and, and he was, um, and he'd been, his duty was to be in the kitchen, and he got to wash dishes for 30 years, and, uh, and so he decided to, to focus on the presence of God, and that would get him through the drudgery, and, and people say, well, you know, how can I serve? Well, you serve by you serving, you know, and she says, being self-ish, you know, uh, because you're serving the, the God self, you see. From the moment I entered religious life, I considered God to be the goal and end of all my soul's thoughts and affections. At the beginning of my novitiate, during the hours consecrated to mental prayer, I spent my time learning to appreciate the truth of this divine being, more so by the light of faith than by the work of meditation and discourse. By the short and sure means, I advanced in the knowledge of this amiable object with whom I resolved to remain forever. Therefore, completely penetrated by the grandeur of the infinite being, I would enclose myself in the place obedience had marked out for me, the kitchen. There alone, once my duties were taken care of, I devoted what time remained to mental prayer, before as well as after my work, after my work, when I begin my work, I said to God with filial trust, my God, since you are with me, and since I must supply myself to these duties by your order, I beg you to give me the grace to remain with you and keep you company. Even better, my Lord, work with me, accept my efforts, and take possession of all my affections. Thus doing my work, I continue to speak intimately with him, offering him my little services, asking him for my graces or for his graces. When my work was completed, I examined the manner in which I had done it. And if I found any good in it, I thanked God. But if I noticed any mistakes, I asked pardon and without getting discouraged, I redirected my mind and began again to abide with God as if I had never moved away from him. And this is the next part is very important. Thus, by getting back up after my falls and by the multiplicity of acts of faith and love, I arrived at a state in which it would have been just as impossible not to think about God as it was difficult to get used to doing so in the beginning. So essentially it says, you know, when you get, when you fall off the horse, you just get back up and you keep on keeping on, you know, it, in, in, and uh, life, life is, 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 is messy. And, and it's just, you just keep on keeping on. You try to be the best you as you can. I, I was on Facebook the other day and, and uh, a thing from Greg Braden came across my, my Facebook page. And it was in the shape of a Christmas tree. And I thought it was kind of neat. It said, this Christmas and a quarrel. Seek out a forgotten friend. Dismiss suspicion and replace it with trust. Write a love letter. Share some treasure. Give a soft answer. Keep a promise. Find the time. Forgo, forgo a grudge. Forgive an enemy. Listen. Apologize if you were wrong. Try to understand. Examine your demands on others. Think first of someone else. Be kind. Be gentle. 
appreciate. Laugh a little, <laughs> laugh a little more, or laugh a lot. Express your gratitude. Gladden the heart of a child. Welcome a stranger. Take pleasure in the beauty and the wonder of earth. Speak your love. Speak it again. Speak it yet once again. And see, when you go with that attitude, when you, that is practicing the presence of God. Be kind. Be kind is one of the greatest ones. And then when you take that, wherever you go is holy ground because you are holy. You are the, the spark of God incarnate. You know, in the Bible, it says, you know, about Mary, right? Blessed thou art among women. Well, you know, that's, that's not just for Mary. We all carry the Christ spirit and we can deliberately nurture the Christ spirit. This time of year reminds us of this presence within us and that we can choose to let it be born, to birth it. And in birthing it, we can say, blessed is the fruit of thy hearts, Christos, the Christ spirit, the Christ love. So the themes of this month, they're the questions I ask of you today. The spiritual inventory I take of myself and ask you all to do this season also. Where am I not allowing the gift of the Christ presence to radiate within me and in my life? Number two, what have I learned or am learning as I allow more of the Christ love to radiate from my heart to the world? And number three, and in my spiritual goals of 2022, can I allow myself to become more of my authentic self through radiating more of this love energy through me and as me to everyone I meet? So remember, as you open your hearts to unconditional love, birthing the true meaning of Christmas, irradiate the presence, the true gift of Christmas. Thank you. Thank you, Missy. Thank you very much. Yes, it's a great reminder to us all that we are never alone. God is right there present in everything. Just like we say in our closing, in our closing prayer of the service, you know, uh, uh, the energy of God is me. Wherever I am, God is. We know this. And that gives us great joy and comfort to know we're never alone. And we can use this, this fabulous being of God in our lives to make us stronger and better each day and toward others. Thank you. It's time for some music. And I'd like to introduce Mr. Jim Saverino. Good morning, Jim. I'll unmute this time. Good morning. There you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's OK. Uh, the Zoom thing. The first thing I learned on Zoom was to say, unmute, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's something. It's called a New Day Born. I went walking on a sunny morn. Nothing on my mind, just a new day born Among the trees, I heard the river run Made my communion with the morning sun but The river is wild, and the river is fast But for a short time, it will not last When the snow melt passes the river slows, everything's softer, that's how it goes. Life is a river, we watch it grow, move through the seasons as the ages flow. 
time is constant whether fast or slow before we know it we reach the ocean where we were meant to go in the stillness of the summer heat time slows down the passing is sweet in the summer days the warmness grows little fishes nipping at my toes they have their fun and i have mine they meet a new friend i drink my wine with a setting sun I walk away into my shelter till the newborn day Life is a river we watch it flow move through the seasons as the ages grow Time is constant whether fast or slow before we know it we reach the ocean where we were meant to go where we were meant to go where we were meant to go thank you jen that was beautiful thank you uh, what an uplifting song that was wonderful we were meant to go it's time for our main speaker. I get to introduce Reverend Kim Haley. Good morning, Kim. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I'm going to get a little closer. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, good. Because I um, had a little bit of a technical hiccup this morning and I had to pull in my laptop and that's what I'm using because my, my other computer, my desktop would not come on. It, it wouldn't give me anything. So I went, oh, that's why I was going to join you early today. <laughs> yes, this is working well. But you have to just, yeah, but this is not bad. So I, we just, Michael was helping me. We got this in. Right. So <laughs> uh, good morning. <laughs> good morning, everyone. First, I, I want to welcome you, the whole of you all your DNA, which I believe carries the messages of your ancestors and those that have come before you. They are a part of the all that is with us always and in all ways. I do rock a lot, so I hope that's okay for you and you don't get seasick listening. <laughs> Just close your eyes, <laughs> you'll be okay. I want to welcome you to enter a state of being that is of light and of joy and happiness for the holidays and the new year and beyond. I wanna remind you that happiness is your sovereign right, that joy and happiness is your connection to the unifying principle of love. When you um, choose to recognize that unifying principle of love every day, every moment, you are declaring your freedom from struggles and illusion and the illusion of confusion, actually. Um, may you remember that we are vibratory beings. I have, was reminded of this from somebody just recently, that when we are in the flow with the divine, we experience the joy from this connection of source energy. We experience a flow that we are headed in the right direction. We open to the flow, as Angie says, we are heading our canoe in the right direction, in that flow. And as we open our creative channel to the creator, many gentle but powerful changes are to be expected. Well, let's call the creator consciousness love, and we all have a place in this consciousness. Outside stuff is not the creator. And it's a, this time of year, we can get kind of hung up on that. I can. I'm not saying you did it. I can. <laughs> and a person is. And, 
And we all create in significant ways. Outside stuff isn't, but the person is. And divine energy works through me as intuition when I drop the desire for a specific outcome. This takes practice and awareness. Um, and, you know, it does take practice and awareness. And, and it may happen so seamlessly sometimes that we just realize we feel better, more grounded, and less judgmental about life. So what have I learned? <laughs> what have I learned? There's so many things. <laughs> um, in all honesty, I have learned that I can be very impatient. I can be a lot of things like that. Um, but I also learned that I have to get out of my own way. Just, and, and, and a lot of people, what, you, what do you mean by that? <laughs> and I mean that the small me, the, the old habit patterns, I, I can forgo those. I, I really don't think they serve me anymore. And um, I want to let those go. Um, it's going to take, it's a continuous lesson, you know, uh, for me. And uh, I think to accept myself more. Um, it's still taking some real estate up in my psyche. And I'm remembering to now ask for guidance and to exercise more patience, <laughs> especially when things don't go with the way that you think they're going to go. And you think you've had it all planned out and something goes, nope. Um, so I was, I was taking an inventory just this last week, uh, this kind of a spontaneous thing. I've been meaning to do it, but I just keep putting it off. And I actually went into this closet I have, and there's a lot of boxes in there of pictures and, and, uh, cards, some cards I save. I, I'm a hoarder a little bit. <laughs> I save a lot of stuff. And I was looking at those things and, and pictures and some of my old writing. And so I didn't know if that was necessarily, you know, it's an inventory, but it wasn't, I know what maybe was intended in the idea of a spiritual inventory. But what happened during this inventory um, is that a certain nostalgia set in for me around this activity of looking at past pictures and old writings and, and that. And um, it's the kind of activity that can bring that nostalgia up. And especially around the holiday season, we can experience a lot of nostalgia around the holiday season. You know, um, we think about our friends from the past or people that are physically not present in our lives anymore and our family. And, uh, you know, they may not be in the same neck of the wood, they still on the planet, but I was kind of immersed in this mood of connection to a stream of thought that was in the now. And, and I felt a deep emotion. And the deep emotion was not what I thought I was going to have, but it was joy. And it, it actually was joy. Um, I was not in a place of sadness, um, although I have been, but I was now in the energy of joy, which felt huge. It felt really huge. Um, and I also felt very grateful for it. Um, Cause it took me a while to embrace the holiday spirit. You know, we have spirit around us all the time, but you know, there's this pressure sometimes about embracing being in the holiday spirit. And I love Christmas. I've always loved it, um, no matter what. And just this year took a little while to get going, but after doing a couple of these things and, and having some wonderful conversations and looking at some of the things from the past, I started embracing the holiday spirit. And that, means that I probably am steering my canoe in the right direction now. Um, and thank you, Angie, for that metaphor. I, um, being worried about stuff was, I released it. And, and the remembrance of those that represented love in my life brought me to a wonderful place. And I, I really believe that the vibratory energy of love is what God is all about. God is love uh, for me, 
and we could talk about it in other ways, but he is, God is for me that way. Um, so what is it I want for the new year, 2022? Wow, it's already 2022. Kind of blows my mind sometimes when I look at it. Um, it's to play a little bit more, but not to pressure, to be so pressured all the time, you know, to play a little bit more, to, to let the spirit move through me and know that it's always there supporting me and everyone. And, you know, to be less critical of myself and others. But you know what? Even if I don't make it in a perfect way, you know, doing these things, it's okay. Because in a sense, I know that I already have these things. They're already there. And that's the realization that those things are happening in my life. They're happening in all of our lives. And it's just where we are looking. Where do we put our attention? Where do we put our presence? As Missy was talking about presence. Um, we use those things. Um, I am, um, I know that I'm that. And I have a story that I'm going to share with you now. And yes, I will be reading it. Uh, it's a short excerpt taken from a book written by Brenda Eulin. Um, the book is called If You Want to Write, a book about art, independence, and spirit. And she explains how um, she asked her pupils, who are all adults, to write about a childhood memory and to write it as recklessly and carelessly and fast and sloppily as possible on paper. This might get some Virgo people a little touchy, but anyway, we'll just keep going. <laughs> um, she offers the following reasons for why it worked. They, her pupils, would forget about writing and trying to please the teacher. Their only effort became to tell spontaneously and impulsively what they remembered. And childhood experiences in particular, uh, for this reason, a child experiences things from his or her true self or creatively, um, I call it the God self the innocent self, and not from his or her theoretical self or dutifully, um, i.e. the selves that they think they ought to be. That is why childhood memories are the most living and sparkling and true. And we all have a child inside. And so when we do remember it and we are in the child, the playful spirit of the child, it just comes, you know, it just happens. So the following story is an excerpt written by a fledgling writer in one of her classes doing that, you know, writing from a childhood memory. She was a hardworking mother, housewife and mother of four who really wanted and desired to write or to express something like that. And she used this technique of fast, reckless, creative expression. And I like her story for its simplicity and many other reasons. And I feel that it relates to the holiday spirit and to spirituality on any day. Uh, and the thing about it is, I've always wanted to share this story with someone and I thought it's such a good time of year to do it. So yes, I'm going to break a lot of rules. I'm gonna read it because I think you may like it. And so here it goes. If you can't hear me, just let me know, because I'm not going to be actually watching the screen. You might have to unmute. <laughs> but hurriedly, Carolyn slipped out of the heavy flannel nightgown and shivered as she pulled on the long-sleeved, long-legged underwear, which was clammy from having lain on the floor all night. A hurried brush of her hair, a clumsy long braid made with stiffening fingers, a search for her hair ribbon, which was gone again. Her teeth began to chatter 
So she tied her hair with the first thing she found handy, dived into her red flannel petticoat, snug fitting up to the shoulders to keep her warm. Then into the heavy plaid dress and down the stairs in a clatter of squeaking steps and bare feet to put on her shoes by the kitchen fire. Carolyn was in a hurry, as usual, to get outside in time to hear the early bells of St. Joseph's Church. Her mother, busily preparing breakfast, glanced at her to see if she was all together and noticed one of her shoelaces was gone. Caroline, mother never said Caroline, where is your shoestring? In her hair again, Mama, the answer came from the precise Elizabeth. You go right back upstairs, young lady, and get your hair ribbon. But Ma, it's too cold up there. You do as I say, and don't forget to wash either. As Carolyn turned back the covers to look for the ribbon, she noticed a small pile of snow on the bed where it had blown in through the cracks under the eaves. She brushed it away and wished she had taken her ribbon off and folded it nicely and placed it on her stand as Elizabeth always did. Elizabeth never had to hunt for her things in the cold. At last, the ribbon was found kicked tightly against the foot of the bed. It was a sorry sight indeed. She turned to the wash bowl. The picture was cracked from the top to the bottom and held upright by the frozen water, which had been nice and warm the night before. It must be terribly cold to freeze hard like that, thought Carolyn. Again, she descended the stairs, this time quietly. She took her coat and bonnet from the hook at the foot of the stairs and slipped silently out the door. Would she still be in time? Yes, there was father waiting beside the barn door. Then clear, it came across the five miles of country, frozen country, bong, bing, bong, bing. The bells as though they were just beside them, beautifully clear toned. It must be below 30 degrees this morning. The bells are so loud. Do you suppose we will hear cousin Jeff's sleigh bells as he comes up the river, father? We don't usually hear them that far unless it is more than 40 below zero. Listen, it's them, it's them. Carolyn clapped her hands in glee. And they're on the river, father, hear them? There'll be lots of sleds today. Clearer and clearer came the sound of sleigh bells, led by the great round bells which cousin Jeff had on the hames and back of his team, four on each horse. Klong along, clang along, they rang out in mellow beauty above the more silver-toned bells which circled the horses' bodies. Louder and louder they rang as they emerged from the timber-lined frozen river out onto the open expanse of the lake, up which the farmers hauled to market the wood cleared from their virgin acres. Load after load, a long line of heavy sleds, the squeaking runners mingling their high piercing notes with the tingling bells. They proclaimed a bitterly cold morning. Carolyn's father lived at the halfway bend in the lake. His two sons with their loads would join the long procession as it went by on the long trek to market. Father, when it is cold like today, don't you think the sleds sing beautifully? She was not quite sure that he would understand her. The sleds going by did something to her inside. She wanted to bottle up all their melodies and keep them. Carolyn had never heard of a symph symphony, but that was what she heard in the sleds on those cold, cold days. Yes, daughter, I love their song. Carolyn moved closer to him and snuggled her small 10-year-old hand into his big mitted paw. It was good to have someone understand. Clang-a-lang, jingle-jingle, and the clear song of the sleds, like the tones 
of a violin burst forth on the crisp air in all their glory as the sled swung into view around the bend. They are more beautiful than the bells of St. Joseph, said Carolyn. I think that is the way it sounds in heaven. Perhaps it is. Bong a bong, the church bells again led the symphony of sleighs. Come, my child, we have been standing here an hour. You will be frozen. Skip along and get ready for school. And don't forget to bundle up warm because the bells say 40 below. And now I have a question. Of course, I always have questions for you. <laughs> um, I ask you this question. Would you be willing to write about a childhood memory? Or, or just think about one that pops up spontaneously for you? You know, maybe meditate on what brought you joy or, or sadness, as the case may be. There is no right, R-I-G-H-T, or wrong. You can light a candle, take a breath, take three breaths, and let go. It's a gift you could give yourself. And, you know, you may, let me see if I can find what I wanted to tell you. And you may experience joy and a blessed release. <laughs> um, I know I remember things that are so simple, but so profound that pushed open a door for me and allowed the awe inspiring back into my heart. Remembering when I was 10 years old, and my 10 year old self would be laying on the living room carpet, looking up through the branches of her very spindly Christmas tree at all the lights. And I thought it was beautiful, sparkly, and this transported me to joy. And I choose joy again. And so I end my talk by reading another short passage authored by Fra Giovanni. There is nothing I can give you which you do not have. But there is much, very much, that well I cannot give it, you can take. Well I cannot, no heaven can, can come to us unless our hearts find rest in today. Take heaven. No peace lies in the future which is not hidden in this present instant. Take peace. The gloom of the world is but a shadow. Behind it, yet within reach, is joy. There is a radiance and a glory in the darkness, could we but see. And to see, we have only to look. I beseech you to look. Many blessings of joy peace and love now and always. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Reverend Kimberly. Thank you so much. Well, You're welcome. the word joy keeps coming into my head and you can't, you can't say the word joy without smiling at the same time. It's just, it's a very happy word. It's a happy yeah. word. Yeah. And you've got, uh, you know, and checking in with yourself, doing your own inventory and checking in with, with others and being kind to ourselves and others. It's just a great message, great reminder to us, not only this season, but always, always, always. So thank you so much. <sighs> it's now time for our healing circle portion of the service. And I'd like to ask Reverend Sandy to guide us through this healing circle. Sandy? And let's start off with Reverend Angie, please. Thank you, Sandy. Join me in prayer. From the top floor of our awareness, we express our gratitude in being the life form of God, experiencing this human drama. As each of us, we accept right here and now the divine perfection of our physical bodies and all the experiences and circumstances that have come our way. Every cell in our body radiates the healing love energy of God. Every organ in our body functions in divine perfection. 
We are whole, we're complete and abundant in all ways. And with deep appreciation, we release this prayer into the law of mind, knowing that it is our truth, it is our authentic self. And so it is. Amen. Thank you. And anyone who wants to add, please go ahead and then speak. Something. Yep. Yes, Nancy. Hi. Um, I would like to send prayers out to my mother, who is 100 years old, um, for peace. And when she does make the transition and she passes, that it be peaceful and be a blessing. Thank you. It is done. Sarah? Sarah? I just wanted to say a Christmas wish that we are able to see our beautiful building at PLC open again in 2022. It is done. And it should be open the first Sunday in January. Kim? Um, I'm going to echo, I think it's Nancy that just said, my, my mother's 90 and she just broke her ankle and uh, she's in the hospital and we don't think that she's going to probably leave the hospital. So I want like to have prayers for her during this transitory time for peace as well and for comfort and that the feeling of not being alone escorts her. She knows she's not alone. Um, I hope that realization will come to her. Thank you. Done. I'd like to put my great grandson, Archer, in the circle. He's been running 105 fever. We think it's COVID and uh, to see him well and whole and recovering. Yes, it is done. I would like to put my um, brother-in-law, uh, Russ, who just had neck surgery, and my older sister, Kathleen, who has a wound in her, in her leg that needs healing, and my younger sister, Mary, who's going through some grief right now. I'd like to put them all into the circle. It is done. I'd like to also put Joe and Marilyn in the circle um, that they find home and sanctuary that suits them perfectly, that they can have their animals and all that comfort of love for themselves in a home. And so it is. It is done. Jenny, I saw your hand up. You need to unmute, honey. We have dogs going on in the back, but if you wouldn't mind putting me in this circle, I've had some, uh, I sprained a muscle in my back, um, falling off a horse. And um, I've had some pretty amazing um, uh, spasms. So um, I would love it to have some energy sent my way for quick and peaceful healing for that. It is done. <laughs> I would like to put into the circle all those uh, wants and needs and wishes uh, uh, and all that which is on people's hearts that they feel unable to, to put into the circle or to vocalize, but would like to know the wholeness and the light to come in and relieve and to know that wholeness and light for them all. And it is done. Anyone else? Uh, 
then know with me that all of these are granted. For there is only God and only love. And this love flows through us, healing us, renewing us, gifting us with the truth of our beingness. I accept the beauty of who we are, the wonder that permeates us in our world. As you go forth today, share this wonder, share your inner beauty, share it. Smile at people, look people in the eyes. Make this holiday season one of the best that there has ever been. And I give such wonderfully loving thanks for that which is ours and say with me, please. And so, and so it is. Beautiful. Thank you all for sharing. Beautiful. Beautiful. It is time for our offertory. Would you please uh, say the offertory blessing with me? Divine, Divine love, love flowing, flowing through, through me, blesses, blesses and, and increases, increases all that, that I give and, and all that I receive. I believe everyone under, understands and knows how to tithe if you wish to do so on the iFocus email that Luana sends out. Weekly, there's a donate donate green button on there. You just push that button. It tells you exactly how you can donate funds toward the PLC. Or you can send checks to the Positive Living Center. And I believe the PO box is in the chat box. Yes, it is. Thank you for people to do it that way. And thank you so much for all of you who are supporting the PLC through your time, your money, and your efforts. We will be back in that building very, very soon. I'm very excited about that. And it's time for announcements. Do we have any announcements this morning? Yes, Judy. Uh, this is an announcement for Brenda. She uh, couldn't stay in with us for our entire service today. Huh? She has been gathering Christmas trees that have been uh, relatively unwanted by people. They're artificial trees. And so far she's given 11 families trees in the last week. And uh, she asked if you have old trees that you no longer want or want to love or want to upgrade. Uh, we're, we're collecting them for next year or until the end of this season, but collecting them for next year also. Wonderful. And it's been families with children that otherwise would not have uh, the traditional Christmas celebration. So Beautiful. Beautiful. Contact Beautiful. her or I, and we greatly appreciate your, your contribution to that. Thank you, Reverend Judy. Thank, Thank you. Anyone else? Mm. Very well. Uh, I want to remind you all that we are here for you always, practitioners and ministers alike. Anytime. If you would like to, like prayer partners, uh, uh, you know, you want to go through me, if you like, uh, I, can, I can send out prayers to all ministers and all practitioners as we do. Uh, for as a prayer team, uh, team for you, but we are always available to you as individuals as well. Next week's speaker, Reverend Judy DeRosa. Look forward to hearing you speak, Judy. Thank you. And it's time for our prayer of protection. The light, the light of God, God surrounds, surrounds me. The, the love, love of God, God enfolds me. me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. The energy of God is me. Wherever I am, God is, and all is well. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Reverend Sandy, will you pray us out, please? Yes. 
Oh, as we go forth today, I know that there is only God and the beauty and the exuberance that comes with this holiday season is ours. That we go forth sharing it, dancing, loving, accepting the gifts of the Christmas season. I accept that our families and all of those around us are loved and taken care of, that we reach out to each other, supporting each other, helping each other, sending our healing prayers and healing graces as we go. Oh, accept the beauty of who and what you are. We make a difference and the world needs us. And say with me, please, with grateful thanks. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Reverend Sandy. Thank you all for being here today. Fabulous service as always. Thank you for the great talks, the music, and your thoughts today. God bless you all. We'll see you next week. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Happy Christmas. Hanukkah. <laughs> yeah. Have a great Bye. holiday. Have a great holiday. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Merry Christmas. Bye, Anna.